Hi, I'm Carrie McGrath with Elanco Communications, and I am here at VMAX with Dr. Susan Little, who is a professor of parasitology at Oklahoma State University. Yep. And you are quite an expert in parasitology. Oh, well, thank you, Carrie. <laughs> As a matter of fact, who was it that introduced you and said that if there were a Mount Rushmore of parasitologists, <laughs> that you would be on it? Ne never thought about having my face carved in stone before. Hey, that's a <laughs> compliment, though. So we're here talking today a little bit about a study that you just presented That's right. on worms. Worms. So tell me a little bit about your findings and what's important for veterinarians as well as pet owners to take away. For sure. Well, we know that parasites, including intestinal worms, are really common in dogs. And we've known that for a while. And veterinarians already go to great lengths to limit the disease caused in dogs, the health risks caused to dogs and to people by all those worms. And so every veterinarian recommends and the Companion Animal Parasite Council recommends every dog, every month, all year long, be on something to control those worms. So now, we just did this study to see how's it working. How is it working? Well, I know, confession some good, some time. Bad. <laughs> I know. It's working for sure. So we did a national study with Elenco and IDEX Laboratories and then the scientists at Oklahoma State University. We all came together, collected over 3,000 samples from over 30, or from 30 metro areas, over 280 dog parks, and just looked to see, do the dogs going to the dog parks have worms? Are they infected? Ran all those diagnostic tests. And then when we collected the samples, um, we also asked the owners, is your dog on a parasite control product? Uh -huh. And when we looked at that, the dog's on a parasite control product, kind of doing what veterinarians want them to do, trying to limit the worms, had significantly lower worm infection oh, great. than the dogs not on parasite control products. Ooh. The problem is there's still a lot of those dogs not on parasite control products, so the risk is still very high. Okay. So is it is there some differentiator between this type of dog gets worms this type doesn't isn't it pretty much puppies worms are a puppy problem worms are definitely a puppy problem that's true but we found worms in all ages of dogs and dogs don't ever develop complete immunity to hookworms and whipworms and so they be, they stay at risk and if they get to go to the dog park which is where we collected samples from because everybody loves to go to the dog park right, of course. so if you get to go to the dog park you may be at an even increased risk because that's where other dogs are they They've defecated on the ground. There's worm eggs or worm larvae there. And then the next dogs that come in can get infected. And that also just underscores the importance of clean up after your dog. Absolutely. We all, we're Absolutely. all in this together. Yes. So clean up after your dog. And unfortunately, at all the parks we noticed, the majority of owners do. Great. And then there's those owners that don't. And so there was, and maybe they didn't see, they were distracted talking to someone, they it have happens. multiple dogs, you might miss it. But what that means is now there's eggs in the environment that can larvae, and there's a risk of infection. Now let's talk a little bit about the type of worms, because when I think uh, worms and dogs, I think heartworms. Absolutely. Um, but. We're not talking heartworms here, right? Right. So heartworms are transmitted by mosquitoes, as you yep. know, and so that's the big concern, and that's why we recommend heartworm prevention, because we can't keep all the mosquitoes away. The intestinal worms that we're talking about are actually transmitted usually when the dog eats something from the ground. So they, Which they eat do. soil. Abs yeah, they rock too. But even if they're diving to get a tennis ball and they scoop up some dirt, or the ball has rolled through the dirt, it may have picked up some worm eggs. They're diving for the frisbee. So inadvertently, they can ingest some eggs in the soil. And so they're considered kind of soil transmitted. And that's really the concern. And that's why veterinarians recommend every dog be dewormed every month all year long. And we're, while the study was done in dog parks, obviously because it's a very easy place for you guys to get a controlled, um, controlled area where you know there's going to be fresh feces. To right, test. yeah. Um, this study doesn't necessarily start and stop at the dog park. No, because dogs get to go on walks with their owners just around the neighborhood. And again, not everybody picks up consistently after their dog. They might be playing um, outside the apartment complex. They might just be in at the groomer or at the going to the veterinarian and at going, defecating outside um, at the doggy daycare. And so anywhere dogs congregate is a risk for a parasite transmission. So even in your backyard? Um, yeah, if the dog, if your own dog has worms and then defecates in the backyard, those eggs are gonna stay there. And for whipworms and roundworms, the eggs will live for years and remain really? infective. And so you can then deworm the dog, but he goes back into his own backyard and reinfects himself from the eggs he himself put there just a few few months before. Yeah. Um, is this, so is this a, 
Are you finding these worms too in cold climates? Because isn't it primarily an issue with warmer climates? We did look at that regionality and we found one in five dogs going to dog parks is infected with parasites. So 20, over 20% 20 of the dogs were wow. infected, which was much higher than we expected. I was just going to ask but if that was higher yeah, than we expected. Yeah, I thought it might be 10 to 15% because that's what we see. It's a little bit higher than what we see in pet dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, well cared for pet dogs that go to the veterinarian who are on a parasite control product, then it'll be below 10%. But at the dog parks, it was higher. It wasn't really that different in the upper Midwest, the Northeast, and the Southern US. Um, the West Coast was a bit lower, but still almost 80% of the parks in the Western US had at least one dog shedding parasites. So it was still pretty high. The eggs will survive in the cold. So cold temperatures don't really affect whipworm or roundworm eggs. We did see a lower hookworm prevalence in the Northern US compared mm -hmm. to the Southern, but it was still over 5% of the dogs were infected with hookworm. So it wasn't that much lower. Yeah. Now, you had you had dispelled some misperceptions that misconceptions that people have about worms and dogs. Um, so it's not only puppies. Right. Dogs can get them. Uh, geography, they're everywhere. Right. What are some other misperceptions that people have or myths about worms and dogs? Well, I think one of the misconceptions is that it's just a dog problem. Mm -hmm. It certainly is a dog problem, and that's what I focus on as a veterinarian, but it's also a public health problem. Mm -hmm. Hookworms and roundworms can go on to infect people as well, and so we want to make sure the dogs are free of the infection so they don't contaminate the environment where children or adults spend their time and might become infected. So that's one concern. So when your veterinarian recommends parasite control for your dog or for your cat, she's thinking about your dog or cat, but she's also thinking about your family. It really is about protecting the entire family from parasites, so that's one. And then probably another um, myth, you mentioned age. I think just like everybody thinks not in my backyard, we all think not in my dog. People are often just surprised that their dog has parasites. We can't tell from looking at the dog whether or not it has parasites. We have to collect that sample and then do the fecal testing necessary, um, either in the practice or send it off to a diagnostic lab to find out. Because the eggs are microscopic, you won't see worms in the feces necessarily. If there's tapeworms, you might. If there's large roundworms in a puppy, you might. But for hookworms and whipworms, you would never know until the dog was gravely ill that there was a there was an infection there. So we have to do those tests. And, and I think that that is a, a common misperception that I've heard is that you would be able to see the worms. You can see the right. worms. If your dog has worms, you'll see it in the feces. And that is not and That is not case. always true. In fact, it's usually not true. Okay. Sometimes you do see the worms, but the majority of the time you won't. And so we have to have that sample. That's why the veterinarian asked for the fecal sample at the annual exam, yeah. so that we can test to be sure. What else? We've covered a lot. Uh, you had just given a talk on this study to an entire auditorium of veterinarians and I had the, the uh, opportunity to sit in and listen too and everyone was just paying rapt attention to what you were saying. So what was the feedback afterwards? It was good. We had a lot of veterinarians and technicians come up and discuss further and I think I think folks were sort of energized to continue this battle against the parasites that we've all been waging. Um, we have great products to try and control those parasites and so veterinarians can definitely make a difference. And that came through loud and clear in the study data. Mm -hmm. We saw a significantly reduced level of infection in dogs that were on preventive. We also interestingly saw if the owner, we, we asked the owners just a couple questions besides the age of the dog and the breed and everything. We asked them, had their dog ever been diagnosed with a parasite? before and if they said yes they were much more likely to be on a preventive mm. so it sort of speaks to the importance of doing that diagnostic test because now we all know owner and veterinarian and I guess dog if they're listening we all know <laughs> that the, that an infection happened and yeah. that's why that preventive is so important so it's awareness. because it can happen again exactly it's awareness. and so what do veterinarians what's the takeaway for veterinarians what actions do they need to take or what do they need to uh, learn from this study. Just continue that um, the, our efforts about compliance to make sure that owners know about the risks and are taking the steps they can to protect their dogs. And then I think also all of us um, just being aware that the role of dogs in our society has changed in just a generation. Mm -hmm. Dogs now get to go everywhere. Which is great. Yes, it's wonderful. But it also means we have an even greater responsibility to make sure they go everywhere free of parasites. Yes. And we know the majority of pet owners like to bring the dog into the bedroom with them, the dog is in the house.
house. They might take them, you know, throughout the day. The dog just rides around in the car with them. It gets to go everywhere. That's wonderful. We just don't want parasites going everywhere also. Right, absolutely. And that's yeah. an important message for the parents, yeah. uh, pet owners. So thank you so much for joining us here in the thank Olympic you, booth at VMX. And oh, a lot of things going on, exciting time here, a lot of interesting new data. And thank you so much. Great, thank you. Thanks.